Hello, uh, I'm Richard Raffin. Um, I've got a lump of ash here, uh, about six and a half inches diameter and high, and it's going on to a screw chuck. So there's a hole being drilled in the top, and that will go on to uh, this uh, it's a three in one Vic Mark chuck. And then I'll lock the spindle and just oops, wind that right on tight. That's well, it's a slight angle, but it doesn't seem to want to go on any further. So it might start rattling, I don't know, we'll see. And uh, I'm gonna bring the tailstock up just for a bit of extra security. Oh, it's quite wobbly. So, and as usual, I will be roughing down with a half inch spindle gouge. Should be okay. Now, this is going to be some sort of a vase. Okay. Get the worst of the uh, eccentricity off first. So bad. Well, that sounds quite hard, tough. Uh, so it's there's some kind of split there. So this is partly grains going all over the place. This is um, uh, I've gone in cross grain, uh, but that really feels like in grain. Yeah, it cuts easier in the other direction, so I might as well go that way. Oops, splinter coming off, that means that's cross grain. I've got a very short tool here um, and uh, I'm standing back so I'm not in the way of the camera so I'm just going to get a heavier tool so I don't block your vision. So this is a half inch uh, bowl gouge, half inch flute. What at this stage is just to get it um, roughed down with a with a foot I can grab, and all I need is a nice corner in there. It doesn't need to be dovetailed. It doesn't need to have a flat here. Just uh, a nice corner so that the dove jaws will go up against that area. Did I say dove jaws? Dovetail jaws. Make sure that's flat, just slightly concave, which it is. And now I can come round the other side. And the revs can come up a bit because it's all running true. So I'm now running at 
and I just need to get a chisel to uh, get that out and a chisel and a mallet lock the spindle I don't even think of getting a um, getting epoxy or anything for something like this just want to get rid of it Right, so there's a change in the design coming already. So, next thing is to get rid of that. It's actually in line with um, a little kind of knot up there. So I'll just mark that where it is. I know where to look for it. I'll just get rid of all that. As always get rid of what you don't want and then see what you can do with what's left Okay, so that's done. That little bit can go there, but I've got a much better shape uh, idea of shape now. And I've got. Right. I'll just come in here a little bit. Any foot I've got uh, can come off later anyway. I wouldn't dream of expanding a collet and there's far too uh, uncertain a grip. So it's quite a nice kind of pattern coming across there. So that's good. Right, a little, oh no, that's my pencil mark. So, uh, there's still a teeny bit of torn grain there, but that will come out when I take a shear cut that way. Seeing the 3 8 bowl gouge, I need to back the tailstock out of the way. Pressure really is pushing the tool onto the rest rather than against the wood. Good. Feels fine. Yep. Right, so that will now come off and go into uh, some sharp jaws. So remounted in the sharp jaws here um, and as I rotate it by hand you can see it's very slightly out of whack which is um, what's happened is that the uh, some of the teeth have just dug in a little bit further into wood than others and just pulled it off which is fairly common so what I'm going to do is true up this lot And there's still the 3 8 bowl gouge, which is actually half an inch diameter. Flute is 3 8. Right, so that's a little bit lumpy, but cope with that a little bit later. Now I've got to start deciding. Um, what actual shape I want. I'm not um, well out of my comfort zone with these shapes. Uh, so I'll just um, use the same gouge as in my hand. I'll just take this away. Hmm. So there are a couple of things going on here. Uh, one of which is that there's a knot there which I really don't want. So 
I need to take the top off anyway and there's a bit of a split from that across the top so get rid of that first and um, use the half inch spindle gouge for that just holding the tool firmly on the rest and dropping the handle to bring the tool or pushing it away uh, rather from me just to bring the tool into the wood now uh, just going to bring the tail center up probably wouldn't normally bother but if this comes off the camera's right in the way <laughs> pressure going into the cut there. Oh, what's that looking like? So at the moment they've got a shoulder that way, uh, which I don't actually mind too much. And uh, I'll come around the other side and just take a cut. In that direction, I know it's downhill, I'm not supposed to cut in this direction for a shear cut, but... And just stroke the surface up here, the little shear cut with the wing of the tool. that great big feather right the way across um, I don't see any point really in doing too much more than just leaving it pretty much at that shape now before I'm gonna before finalizing the outside um, I'll uh, hollow out the inside so first thing is I don't need all that rest so that goes away and bring out the little short one the very short the fairly short and gonna drill a depth hole and uh, and to start that with the 3 8 uh, spindle gouge that holds is actually pretty well central which is good and just drift it round and just poke it in Now I'm going to need to go further down than that. I'm going to use my twist drill. It can go all the way into the handle. And it really can. That uh, the butt of the handle there can go into the hole almost as far as it can so I'm going to start this with the, uh, the 3 8 deep fluted gouge can't see much of what you're doing um, and having got the start 
and the way I'm going to get the bulk out with a uh, to three quarter inch 20 millimeter um, this is quite a thin one in the uh, about six millimeters thick um, and uh, just going to feed that straight in better make sure is I can go as far as the tang just the beginning there uh, then I might go through the bottom and when you get it dead central in the middle of the hole you can just push it straight in inside so you can oh, take a few more out and then you can have a look. There's noise there uh, which just indicated I was just getting a little bit trying to take too much. I don't want to take more than use more than about um, a quarter of the edge in the corner at one time, just that amount. Right. And here that's taking too much, so I just drift the tool over towards the centre a bit. So now you can uh, see this from the other side. Uh, this handle is not particularly long, uh, it's not the ideal tool for this. Uh, I might try and find a heavy one second, we'll see how we go. Um, so I've got a good grip up near the, the top so I can't push the tool in too fast and otherwise I've got this tucked right in under my armpit so I've got a good grip. <coughs> down to the depth I need. And using the corner of the tool there, sweeping it across. Now I can get in at an angle with this. For depth, or for uh, wall thickness rather, plenty at the moment. So um, it uh, must be th here's five eighths of an inch, which is just over twenty. It's about twenty-two mil. So that's that's fine. Um, so. Next thing is to uh, go in with the the bowl gouge, and I should be able to take a shear cut into around this point. I've got a fairly long bevel on the wing, so I should be able to get in there 
quite comfortably. The starting cut's always a bit uncomfortable for this. Now I'm in, now I've got the bevel rubbing, that feels better. that far in I've got a nice clean cut down to there which is uh, still about uh, three quarters of an inch I think and it's fairly thin there so I can take another pretty heavy cut in there drop the rest very slightly too so I'm working uh, the tool when it's horizontal pretty much at centre so if I stick it up a bit uh, as I come in and around that'll give me uh, the element of an asymmetric curve leaning right across the lathe I need to get my uh, dust extractor bit out of the way ah, right that's what I was afraid of and that's why I don't do the rim first. With these things you get a nice big sh good cut and uh, it also means an awful lot of waste. Uh, which you don't get on the, the smaller smaller tools right that's okay uh, now I've got a fair number of steps in there similar to what you saw before um, this time I'm going to get in with the the big gouge and just work from about here down to the bottom Gotta get over the end of the handle a bit. And the idea is going to be to get a nice clean cut from there, at least down to there with the gouge. Uh, I've got another oh, probably inch to go at the bottom, so I come up again and get in with the uh, the little three quarter inch one right, so let's see. I can feel the, the central hole just drag the tool back up the side and then in again little catch was just suddenly the whole of the edge coming in contact with the, uh, the bottom of the hole. Right. Just think, see where we are. Now some of you are probably wondering what this shiny bit is and that is so when I measure the inside of the bottom I can put it in between the chuck jaws I hope you can see on the camera. Right. Drop the rest a bit in preparation for the the half inch gouge, which is the that's the half inch flute. Yeah, I can just begin to feel the, the tool begin to cut in there. Again, asymmetric tool, so it's going to cut pretty uh, effectively with the, uh, the steeper right wing. Okay, so I've 
need to, I've got a little ridge around here and uh, yeah be okay. jarring was the right wing coming up against the little shoulder close to the bottom. Right, so I've got a pretty good cut down to here now. Now I'm not after an even wall thickness, don't like even wall thicknesses. I think they're dull unless you're going to pierce them and just show how clever you are but the um, Generally I find a uh, varying wall thickness makes for a more interesting holding experience when you handle the vessel. Shade thick up in there but I'll probably do, uh, I'm not sure if I'll do something on the outside or not. There's a shade thick there and I'll just take that out with the smaller gouge. course has given me another shoulder a bit further down but I've got that bit done yeah. yes quite sure if I should have done that um, now inside I've got a step near the bottom um, I think you get the idea about how I'm holding the tools so um, I'm going to come back in with something bigger and heavier either that one or uh, a slightly lighter one and I'll probably take that one in we'll just have a little go here and then we'll move the camera around right press comes up so that's tilted down slightly on the flat and at the bottom of the, uh, the, the hollow I can feel the curve in here. You just need to move smoothly with the tool. That's beginning to sound a bit thin in there. It's relative. But Maybe it's more relative than I thought. So here we are. Oh, I don't want it. That's about a quarter of an inch. I don't want it too much thinner than that. Um, right. Move the camera. I'll give you a little handheld look inside. And the rim is still uh, is not done. It says it was originally. If you remember, I had that little catch. That'll be dealt with shortly. So the next thing is going to be to get rid of those ridges at the bottom. So starting off with this is the heavier uh, round nose. It's uh, nine millimeters thick, one inch, uh, uh, 25 mil diameter wide. Uh, so it's a pretty good strong tool and it's on a, uh, a handle which is about 500. So um, it's about 18 inches or so. So you're not going to see much here I'm afraid. No more than me. stand back and you might be able to see roughly what's happening. Now, I don't like doing this because I've only got the grip at the end of the handle but you can see the kind of action in there. So the inside's done um, or turned and uh, there's a teen little catch there which I had so the next thing is to deal with that 
and uh, most of it could be sanded probably but I'm going to go around I usually use the just to the right of the nose of the um, uh, 3 8 bowl gouge and just a question of easing the tool across very gently right so that's fine now I can sand the inside at this stage and then I do the outside in relation to what the sanded inside because when you're um, when you're sanding you can you take off probably a little bit more than you expect um, so it's it's just safer to uh, to do one surface and then come out and do the other in relation to the the one you've done so the inside's been done that's sanded uh, I haven't uh, polished it or anything because um, this wood is still wet a little bit green so uh, it'll need to dry out um, I'm going to uh, what was it? There was looks almost like a split, but I'm hoping it's a scratch. I can just feel my nail in there, which is not a good thing. So I'm going to uh, cut that out, and uh, I'll just mark where it is there and on this line. I'll probably lose most of that line. I'll put that there, and it goes down to about there. Yes. Anyway, um, I'll take a cut with that, so that's going to change the shape a bit here. But I want to end up with a little kind of undercut on the uh, on the rim. It's very slightly out of whack again now. Anyway, so. Right, whatever it was is gone. That's good. Um, I've got a teeny bit of an undercut there. I'd like a little bit more. It's, it, it's, it's a bit eccentric on the outside of that, but I can cope with that uh, with the sanding. I'm just going to get the whole of that edge in there. So the nose of the tool, you can just see probably a bit of dust there. So that portion is virtually sheer scraping the underside of that little rounded bit. That's all it's going to get. And I've uh, honed up my shear scraper here. And so I've now got what we can define as a little, yes, it is a little bump there. So shear scrape that out of the way. doesn't feel too happy so I'm going to uh, go to the grinder for that so regrinding takes about 10 or just going to the grind takes about 10 seconds makes a difference And if you think the tool could be a little bit sharper, sharpen it. There's a lump there. It might come out with a bit of uh, sanding, heavy sanding. 120 grit. Right, there's a slight lump down there. Now this is going to get reversed in a minute so I can um, to do the foot so I can probably get rid of that doing the other side. Oh, I can get in there alright. Bit of a lump there. So planting my hand on the rest there, thumb on the back and then I can just move the tool back and forth. 
with more control than moving your whole hand. Right, that gets sanded. Bit of uh, 120 grits. So I'll do that down to about here, uh, then I'll come back and we'll turn it around and see what happens then. So with the sanding done, um, now I need to get that reversed in, and uh, we do that over a jam chuck which goes into the same jaws. That will need always needs truing up slightly so um, this is now center work here so this gets done with either a skew chisel or this is the continental roughing gouge good for a little shear cut don't want this angle too steep uh, otherwise the grips not so good you want it kind of shallow so that goes on and the tail center comes up Let's make sure you can see all that yes so it's now just a question of shaping the bottom and uh, it really doesn't need too much I think. But I'm going to get in the way of the camera so just shift this all around a bit and get some better light. Right so that all happens now with a 3-8 spindle gouge so I can really do any shape I want down here um, but a bit noisy um, yes it doesn't need too much. I'm thinking of this not so, as a as a vase for storing uh, perhaps brushes in or something like that. I like to use things um, so if we've got a use at all, um, that would be it all dried flowers perhaps. But anyway, it needs a little bit of weight, reasonable kind of base, reasonably wide base. It's already got a little bit of weight in there. The bottom's probably. Uh, half inch thick. Teeny little bump just there. And that's that bit. Now we want this slightly concave and across the bottom. So again, three eighths gouge. And you use the left wing just to uh, true up the rim, to squeeze it in. And then I've got somewhere to ride the bevel and it'll shear cut back to the middle. Now that spike from the cone goes in probably an eighth of an inch, that's three mil, two and a half millimetres. I want that 
smooth into there. We'll just have a look at the bottom. Ah, how irritating. There's a little split there which I could have taken out. Ah, right. I'm going to measure this carefully because if I can take that out, I will. to read it on the other one. So the inside depth is uh, 13 millimeters, 130 mil, and I've got 142. So that's um, uh, 12, 13 millimeters. Um, That mark is eight. And I think I can take it back. There's a um, the main one on the outside goes back to there. So I'm going to try and get rid of that. Taking a little bit off, uh, <coughs> a little bit off the side, a little bit off the bottom. So the most important thing is to know where the inside is. So we'll just measure this, do this again. Thirteen. So, just get mark exactly where that is. So 13, the inside is there. Pretty much at the top of that mark. So we're not going down that much. Um, yes, probably slightly about there. Right. I'm going to try taking a little bit of this away. Uh, it's so difficult to know what to do. There will be people out there screaming super glue, cyanoacrylic, cyanoacrylate, but super glue gives way after about five or six years, so not really a good long term uh, solution. I'll just come in a bit. I'll take a little bit off and see what's happened there. Almost gone. Right. So. We are drop the rest a little bit for shear strength. The tool's tilted up on edge. It's riding on the rounded side here. A bit of bump there. Get rid of that. Appeared. Well, I think that's just going to have to be uh, included. Oops, don't want to take that away yet. Right, so now I sand this and uh, signing off for the 120 again. Nice.
new bit of 180 folded with the warp of the cloth. Bit of a compound curve there now, don't mind that. Almost forgot the bottom. Blue, the two forty grit. Uh, 320 on the rotary. That goes round with the wood. So it doesn't tend to leave many scratch marks. So before this does not get sanded now, um, that happens later. Now to get away that last little bit, I can either do it off the lathe, well there has to be a little bit of sanding off the lathe, um, but this is cross grain so if I just give the, uh, give the tool a little shove, uh, just as I'm, uh, uh, just as the lathe's slowing down, the, the grain will just shift and break. Um, and. Uh, Oops, mistimed it. Mistimed it again. Oh, that's almost actually it's very irritating. That's almost long grain. Um, so the grain's all over the place on this, so that will just have to be done on a on a disc um, on the lathe so I take take this to the sander. So long nose jaws with a sanding pad in and just gently get at it. Well this pad is a bit ancient and 240 grit but we'll get there eventually. Right, and that little mark doesn't seem to matter too much. Right, and when the when the bowl uh, when the uh, pot has mellowed, um, that'll uh, barely be visible, I imagine. Right, so I'll pop it up and have a look at it. Ah, not too bad. Now that will now dry out and uh, I imagine there will be a little bit of collapse around here which is what I'm after um, and we'll see how it looks in a couple of weeks. So here we are about a week later. Um, the pot has distorted very slightly. Uh, you can see a kind of bulge out to the right here. And the top is distorted a bit. You can see it's just tilted down to the left there. Uh, I quite like the way it's done this. Um, and just adds a bit of character. And I will oil it uh, in probably another three or four weeks when it's dried right out.